Hello, I'm Glorious Liar, and this is a continuation of my ongoing glitch explanation series. Today I will be going over a side effect of one of DK64's most infamous glitches, Intro Story Glitch. You can rewatch many of the game's cutscenes through the replay feature on the main menu, including the intro story that plays when you start a file. It turns out that this feature can be abused in some quite spectacular ways. Through various means, Intro Story Glitch gives us weapons, instruments, moves, the ability to transfer progress between files, and the ability to wrong warp and play unintended cutscenes. Today I will be focusing on the latter, wrong warps and wrong cutscenes. Let's get into it. To start off, I want to talk about the intro story. The intro story is a series of cutscenes with special procedures in order to transition from map to map playing specific numbered cutscenes. Here is the sequence of events that make up the cutscene. Map 1 is value 153 and plays cutscene 0 for the map. A fadeout occurs at 55 seconds. Map 2 is value 172 and plays cutscene 0. A fadeout occurs at about 126. Map 3 is value 152 and plays cutscene 0. A fadeout occurs at about 236. Map 4 is value 172 and plays cutscene 1. Note that this map is reused and cutscene 1 rather than 0 gives the different procedures that make the scene unique. A fadeout occurs at 301. Map 5 is value 153 and plays cutscene 7. This map is also reused. A fadeout occurs at 325. Map 6 is value 152 and plays cutscene 8. This map is again reused. A fadeout occurs at 426. The final map is value 171 and plays cutscene 0. There is no fadeout associated with this, as it is the terminal cutscene of the sequence. I will note here that between the seven maps, cutscene values 0, 1, 7, and 8 are used on the various maps. Equally important is the fact that there are six fadeouts that occur at specific timestamps. This will be important to understand ISG. The address in memory that determines whether the intro story is active is at 0x8075507 in RAM. The timer address that keeps track of how long the intro story has been active is at 0x807f5ce4. Leaving the intro story early cancels the transition procedures by setting the state from inactive from active. Coincidentally, there is a 6 frame gap between when the timer has started and when the intro story is considered active. By cancelling out of the intro story in this 6 frame gap, before the cutscene is considered active, and after the timer has started, the timer is still active and the procedures will still play out. Thus, intro story glitch is achieved. Now you might be wondering, what exactly does it mean for these procedures to play out when you're no longer watching the cutscene? Well it turns out if you happen to be watching a cutscene when one of these fadeouts is queued, it will pull you back into the intro story on the next queued scene. A good example of this is Death, which plays a cutscene before it respawns you in a nearby area. Dying while a fadeout is queued pulls you into the intro story. Map transitions work by setting the next map address in RAM at 0x807444e4 to the appropriate map value as the map transition occurs. This in tandem with the next exit address spawns you at the correct location on the next map. Now comes the cool part. If we die with good positioning, such that our player hits a loading zone while the fadeout is occurring, the loading zone will take priority. The good thing about this is that the only part of the intro story procedure that we are wiping out by doing this is the next map value. The cutscene is still queued up for the next map. The cutscene that plays will either be 0, 1, 7, or 8 like I mentioned before because they are tied to the fadeouts. Let me show an example, but before I do, I must make a note that these transitions are queued, meaning that we need to somehow clear them in the order that they appear if we want to get the latter fadeout's effects. An easy way to do this is by entering the end sequence when a fadeout we want to clear is queued, and holding A once the screen goes dark to auto-cancel the cutscene, moving the sequence along. On to the example. After 325 on the timer, fadeout 5 is queued. Its corresponding cutscene value is 8. So by overriding the transition, we can play cutscene 8 on whatever map we can die into. If we die in the training grounds to Isles loading zone, we can play cutscene 8 on the DK Isles map, which happens to be opening Angry Aztec. This cutscene actually sets the appropriate flag to keep Aztec open and accessible. 
This was used in an old 3 Kong variant of the Any% speedrun, when certain tricks were deemed too hard for most runners. We can do the same thing to open up Factory and Galleon. Cutscene 7 from the 4th ISG fadeout opens the two levels. And again, this permanently unlocks them. Now that I've explained this, I can show some more neat examples. But first, I want to shout out Xcord, who created the Intro Story Glitch channel, documenting a plethora of ISG shenanigans. I highly recommend it. Next up I want to show a cool wrong warp that is thought to be a remnant of the ice key stop and swap mechanic that Rare wanted to incorporate between their games. By dying into the treehouse on Fadeout 3, cutscene 1 is played. This zooms in on an area of the treehouse that in some beta screenshots had a Banjo-Kazooie themed object. At the end of the cutscene you are warped to Crystal Caves. Isotarch found that cutscene 26 in Crystal Caves does this sequence, but in reverse, warping you to the treehouse after focusing on the transition area. Very cool that we can explore this without hacks, but through actual gameplay. The next exploit I want to show off is getting the Rareware Golden Banana early, without the need for 20 fairies. By dying into the Banana Fairy Isle with the third fadeout queued, cutscene 1 is played, opening the door allowing you to grab the GB early. This cuts out a lot of gameplay by not having to collect all the fairies in the levels in DK Isles. The next examples I want to show you don't require death in order to hijack the intro story transitions. Rather, a cutscene will be played that naturally leads into a spinning DK fadeout, and the quick sequence of events cancels the fadeout while still transitioning to a new map. The first example of this is in Japes by using Baboon Blast. The Baboon Blast to the Sky plays a cutscene of DK getting launched, but the map transition occurs quick enough to cancel the fadeout. If we do this on Fadeout 3, Cutscene 1 plays, which apparently causes a side effect of DK being put on a floating pedestal in the sky. From here you can actually pull out your gun, and shoot down some squawks if you're quick. Shoutouts to TJ for showing me that. The next example is in Fungi Forest. Entering Chunky's minecart causes a short cutscene to play in which the floor falls out from beneath you. This is quickly interrupted by the load transition to the minecart, which cancels the fadeout. By doing this on Fadeout 3, Cutscene 1 plays, which after some camera movement gives Chunky control on a floating platform at the start of the ride. From here we can walk around the track, collecting coins and enjoying the scenery. Many objects crash the game, but luckily there is almost no collision around to stop our progress. This is how the coin record for the track is achieved. This gets us to one of my favorite areas to explore. Quite a beautiful place to just walk around in. Next up is the Beetle Race in Aztec. By having Squawks carry us up to the Beetle Race in Mini Monkey, we can get dropped inside which activates a cutscene as we fall in. Doing this on Fadeout 3 plays cutscene 1, which apparently just puts us at the end of the race where we can immediately collect the Golden Banana. Quite convenient. Lastly I want to show off a weird cutscene. The cannon to castle lobby in DK Isles auto cancels any ISG fadeouts, so by entering it after queuing up fadeout 3, cutscene 1 plays on the castle lobby map, which just soft locks you at a weird swaying camera angle. Spooky. I don't know why, but I like this one a lot. That was just a small taste of the possibilities of this exploit. Like I said earlier, we can effectively play cutscenes 0, 1, 7, and 8 on any map we can die or play a cutscene into. There are obstacles that make some transitions seemingly impossible, but there are so many within our reach. Here is the spreadsheet documenting what many of them do if you can find a way to get there and play them. That's it for this video, I hope you enjoyed. I know I enjoyed writing up some of the technical aspects of this exploit and others, and I hope to do more technical videos in the future. They require a bit more time and research, but I think the end product is worth it. I'll see you next time.